Welcome back to Glenna Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I want to share with you um, kind of like a simple node tree created using Spreadshock add-on. It is actually using a Pulga physics. Once again, one single node that's actually kind of strange and powerful inside Spreadshock. And look at this. This is the actual node setup that I created uh, to make something like this. Um, let's see if I can randomize this. The results should actually change in real time, but probably this one already turned into um, a curve. So let me turn that off. Uh, okay, that's the original line. If I randomize, you can see it's happening in real time. Um, yeah, you see the, the node setup is not not complicated. It's actually just five nodes with a with a output nodes here to output the lines. We uh, I started with a uh, oh I actually I actually have one thousand iterations. I have twenty two lines. Let me turn this into one lines. So this is a single lines. So I don't I only activated the drag attractors and randoms and the lines was being um, influenced by the attractors and a single point in pulga i think single point is more like a like a sphere but in this case it's just kind of floating around maybe it hits another sphere is gonna kind of explode um let me try to randomize this a little bit so the so there is some kind of vector out there we duplicate this we cannot really see the, the sphere at this moment I will use icosphere I mean the attractors is like just a bunch of points there you go that's the that's the actual attractors it's not the it's not the Pulga, not the Pulga particles, or yeah, it's not the initial position. We ha we only have one, but we are getting that result, which is really powerful. So single points being influenced by these guys, and then it's just doing crazy stuff. Let me turn off random force. Or perhaps I was wrong maybe it was actually being influenced by the random force maybe we don't actually need the attractors oh the attractors is influencing influence the result slightly no, but not much maybe I in if I increase this by oh, 20 by 20 that's like 8,000 points. It's gonna be a little bit slow. Okay, so that's 8,000 particles. If I hide this, so that's the result. This is actually more more correct. It was influenced by a lot of points. So it's it is attracted into the uh to the by, to the points if uh if I turn off the the force that's what we get from uh the starting points at zero 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 yep starting points at zero 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 it is attracted to the points and then it's settled if I make a couple of these now you can see each one of them is kind of finding it kind of finds the one that's attracted the most attracted the points the most and then settle so yeah this is actually a pretty good example let me make like uh, 50 and then scale the 
the points at the starting points and for it's one of them is getting 1000 iterations so this is actually pretty fast okay so that's quite nice uh, if we want to add random force of course it's gonna be more interesting the result simply gonna explode out ah. but they are interesting how they are moved from one attractor into another attractors you could practically uh, if you use this pulga you can you can if I draw this using annotation you can start with single points like that and then you 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 create a different attractor so it's kind of doing that kind of electricity stuff um, so if I change the vector field a little bit into something different maybe like a spherical uh, random like uh, randomize if I do it like that oh yeah okay it's, get, it's getting it's it becomes like that's too random maybe I'll increase the attraction force to 2 so the count scale increase the size so now let's turn off random force ah yeah alright so where's the starting points it's interesting the starting points okay from there and then it's kind of attracted into the balls into the this random places maybe attraction force can be higher oh it's clamp All right clamp and decay looks like it shoots into one instantly I'm kind of kind of guessing oh okay that's too strong the decay is probably too too big clamping Maybe the location of the attractors is too far, radius too big. It's shooting out that way, maybe because I have initial velocity. Now, I don't have anything. Mm. Attraction force 100. It's funny how this doesn't seem to give anything maximum velocity 10 20 density it could be the density Whenever I give a demo about pool guy, it's always kind of tricky because you don't always get a result. Uh, maximum velocity 100. Drag force, nothing. Attractor force. Maybe I need actually to have more points near near the particle so the particle is kind of lazy it's 
Still nothing. Attractive force. 10,000. But if I give a random force, 